In order for us to find the angle between a diagonal of a cube and one of its edges, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is draw a picture. We've decided to use the unit cube, although any cube would suffice. So the unit cube is a cube whose edge lengths are all equal to one. And we have the lower left corner of our cube situated at the origin. And then what we want to do is draw a diagonal of the cube. So we're going to draw a segment from that lower left corner all the way over to this other point right here. It might be a little bit hard to see this, but that's going to be the diagonal drawn from the origin 0, 0, 0 to the point 1, 1, 1, which indeed will represent the diagonal. And then the next thing we're going to do is examine one of the edges of the cube. We can choose any one of the edges, but we're just going to choose the one that kind of runs along the x-axis right here. We'll darken it up so it's kind of that blue color right there. The next thing we need to do is express those two segments as vectors. Now, why would we want to express them as vectors? Well, because in this section of the chapter, we have examined this corollary right here, this equation that allows us to find the angle between two non-zero vectors. So if we can express the diagonal and the edge in terms of a vector, then we can use this corollary to find the angle between those two vectors, and that will give us the answer to our question. So we can draw the vector for the diagonal as projecting from the origin to the point 1, 1, 1, and then we have the other vector projecting from the origin to the point 1, 0, 0. Now to express the diagonal and the edge as a vector, we're gonna use this idea right here, which basically tells us to find the difference between the x, y, and z coordinates of the points that join the vector. So for example, for the diagonal, we're gonna call the initial point x1, y1, z1, and then the terminal point is going to be x2, y2, z2. And we can see from this equation right here that we can express that vector a as the difference between the x, y, and z coordinates. So for example, for the x, it would be one minus zero, which gives us one. Same thing for the y, it will be one minus zero. And indeed for the z, it's the same as well. So there would be the vector representation of the diagonal of the cube. We're gonna do something similar for the cube's edge in blue over there. And we'll call this our x2, y2, and z2. And then we have the initial point as being the same thing. So x2 minus x1 would be one minus zero. That's gonna give us one. And then y2 minus y1 would be zero. And then same thing for z. So this would be the vector representation of the diagonal and the edge. And now that we have that, we can use the corollary. Now, of course, to use the corollary, we also need to know how to compute the dot product between A and B. And we also need to figure out the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. So we've come down here and we have written down the dot product equation down here below. And then we have written the magnitude of A equation here for reference. So now what we're going to do is find the dot product between vectors A and B. And maybe we'll just draw a little arrow over here. So here we go. We're going to do A dotted with B. And we can do this by simply multiplying the X components of each vector. Same thing with the Y components and then also with the Z components and then adding them together. So for example, when we multiply the X components, this would sort of be our A1 and then this would be our B1. So we would be doing one times one, which of course gives us one. And then we have the same thing for the Y components. We'd be multiplying Oops, we'd be multiplying a2 by b2, so that'd be 1 times 0, which is 0. And then for the z components, it's going to be a3 multiplied by b3, which is also going to be 0, because it's 1 times 0. So the dot product ends up equaling 1. Fair enough. Now we can find the magnitude of vector a, as well as the magnitude of vector b. And to do that, we're going to use this green highlighted equation here. It's basically the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. You end up taking the square root of the sum of the squares of each component. So for vector A, we would have the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. This gives us the square root of 3 once we simplify it. And then for vector B, again, taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, it's going to be 1 squared plus zero squared plus zero squared. And this will simplify to the square root of one, which is just one. Okay, we've got the dot product, the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. We are now ready to compute the angle between these two vectors by using that corollary, which once again looks like this. And we've done the hard work here already, so we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product, which was one. 
over the square root of the product of the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. That would be the square root of 3 times 1. So it's just the square root of 3. And then finally, to find the actual angle, we would just do the inverse cosine of this value, 1 over square root 3. You want to punch this into your calculator. Make sure that it's set to degree mode, of course. And when you do that, you're going to get about 54 Point seven degrees. That would indeed be the angle between the diagonal of the cube, that red segment, and then the edge of the cube, which was blue. It's that angle right there. And again, it equals 54.7 degrees. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, don't feel obligated to. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.